there's a hidden confrontation between Aine Koji and Koenji that we all miss and it has absolutely nothing to do with the T-Rex scene. Not to mention Aine Koji's secret plan to protect Kane no matter the cost and a short story where we learn that the sports festival might not be the first time Aine Koji and Arisu interact. Let's get it. Our story starts with multiple buses stacked back to back. The contents? Every single student in the entire school body. They were all anxious. You know, because the last time they had a field trip, it wasn't exactly fun. And as expected, the mood soon got quiet as Sai ushered them for an announcement. They paid close attention. Their pride was on the line because within an hour, they'd be transported deep within the mountains to a secret training ground where they tackled their first special exam as the newly minted Class C, the Mix Training Camp. So how is this exam gonna work? Well, it's divided into four phases. Phase one, group formation. Phase two, training camp. Phase three, examination. And the final phase, outcome and penalties. Let's start with phase one, what groups? Well, the first thing they'll do upon arrival is separate the boys and girls. That's right, they won't be taking this exam together. In fact, they'll have minimal interaction, just one hour during lunchtime. No cell phones allowed. They'll even be in different buildings. So after separation, the boys and girls will further divide into smaller groups. Let me just give you an example with the boys. Contrary to what season two might have you believe, there are in fact 80 of them. So they'll divide into six different groups, each with 10 to 15 people. So an example split would be something like four groups of 15, two groups of 10, all adding up to 80. Girls will do the exact same. Now you might be thinking, easy peasy. Just do two groups full of 10 students, all from your own class. Done. Not so fast. As per the rules, there has to be a minimum mix of two classes per group. So you can literally stack 14 class C students and one class D student, and that would work. But that random has to be there. These small groups function like temporary classes. Think about the rabbit group from the Zodiac exam. It's exactly like that. And each group is required to pick a leader. And they'll have to do it by the first day. No leader equals instant disqualification. I'll go into what being a leader means in a sec. You need to be smart when forming your groups because you can't swap members or withdraw voluntarily. And if you have to retire due to injury or sickness, your group still has to function like it has one less member. Just think of it like the sports festival. Remember when you didn't have enough people for an event? You either faced a penalty or were outright disqualified. All right, so you've separated the boys and girls, divided up into your small groups, picked leaders. Now, this is where the seniors come in. Just like the first years divided themselves into groups, so did the second and third years. And all these small groups will come together from all the different years to form six large groups with 30 to 45 students each. This is the final step of phase one. The easiest way to remember, within your school year, you form small groups, but combined with all the years, you form large groups. And from here, the exam will move on to phase two, the training camp, the meat of the exam. The camp is seven days, starting tomorrow, which is Friday, and it ends on Wednesday. Sunday will be a day off. During the camp, the small groups will live together and really do everything together. Here's a sample schedule. They'll wake up, grab breakfast, study, get lunch, practice zazen, meditation commonly found in Zen Buddhism. Then they'll grab dinner, bathe, sleep, and repeat. Honestly, the entire training camp is just pain because you can only lose points. For example, not showing up on time, not following instructions. They'll all get you demerits. However, at the end of the seven days, we move on to phase number three, a massive exam based on everything they learned throughout the week. How does it take place? We don't know, but we do know it covers topics like morals, order, individuality, really abstract stuff. We also know how the students will be scored. The exam works on averages. For example, they'll add up the scores of every student in your small group and calculate the average score. And that will be the score for your small group. And they'll do the same thing to calculate the large group score. Those two numbers are everything. With them, you move on to the final phase, outcomes and penalties. First, let's talk outcomes. And this is where the large group comes in. The large groups are ranked from first to last, one to six, based on the average score. For those who place in the upper half from one to three, every single member will get the following rewards. First place, 10K private points and three class points. Second place, 5,000 private points and one class point. 
So I replaced 3,000 private points. So for example, if your small group has 10 members and nine of them are from the same class, if you guys place first, you'll get a total of 27 class points. But for placing first, that's not a lot. Don't worry, these rewards are just the base. They can be amplified. Remember how there's a rule forcing you to mix classes? That rule also comes with benefits. If you have a mix of two classes, you get the base rewards. Three and your rewards are double. With a mix of four classes, your rewards are triple. And the bonuses don't stop there. It also extends to the number of people in your group. If you have 10 members, you get the base. With 15, your results are multiplied by 1.5. But wait, there's more. Remember how I said you had to pick leaders? If the leader is from your class, the benefits your classmates get are doubled. How high can these numbers stack? What's the juiciest setup? It's with 15 members, 12 from your class, and one from every other class. And of course, your class has to have the leader. If you get first, you'll get 1 million private points and 336 class points. To give you context, if class C got that right now, they'd instantly move up to class B. But if your large group falls between four to six place, the bottom half, you'll get demerits. If you're fourth place, every member will lose 5k private points. Fifth, and you'll lose 10k private points and three class points. Last place will lose 20k private points and five class points. Now, those amplifiers I talked about before, they don't work for the demerits, thank God. But there's a catch. Say you have zero points, you can't lose more, right? Wrong. The demerits will stay there and will automatically get subtracted when you do get some points. And to be fair, this is the first time this mechanic has been introduced. And dude, this isn't even the worst part. I haven't even gotten to the penalties yet. So far, we've seen being the leader as a positive. More points, who doesn't want that? Oh, I'll show you why you don't want that. Because the penalty directly affects the leader, but it's only for the large group that comes in last. The school will come up with an average, a borderline score. Then they'll look at all the small groups that make up the large group that came in last. And if any of those small groups fall below that borderline score, the small group's leader is expelled. This is where things get interesting because the leader can choose another member to be expelled alongside them. To be fair, they can't choose anyone at random. That person also had to contribute to the failing of the group. The school will verify that. And as if expulsion would be the only penalty, they'll also tally up the number of the leader's classmates in that failing group. For each person, that class will lose 100 class points. And again, it's a demerit that sticks. So if you don't have enough, it'll be subtracted when you do. With the explanations done, I Nikoji knew right away. Multiple strategies were set up. Alliances formed. Targets for expulsion decided. Hirata asked a vital question. If someone's expelled, can they be saved? Is there a lifeline? Of course, but it's not cheap. It'll cost 20 million private points and 300 class points. Not to mention it won't negate the class point penalty. And to be fair, it didn't matter what the lifeline was. Class C can't afford it. Hirata took the mic and began discussion. There was an idea to share the points, just like during the sports festival. However, with a friendly warning from Sai, the students voted not to. Aini Koji knew right off the bat, the first years were screwed. Not only are they going up against the seniors, they're also competing against students who have done this exam before. Not only once, but twice. Ainekoji made his first move. He contacted Manabu, asking if Nagumo had a hand in this exam. And as he's doing that, Horikita reaches out to him, asking if he had any ideas. Ainekoji's like, nope, she was not happy. Meanwhile, discussion raged on in the Ainekoji group. The class decided since the girls can't reach Hirata, Horikita would be the go-to person. However, Horikita using the excuse that she's unapproachable, which I mean isn't wrong, roped in Kushida as a co-leader. But this is a front. She's still obsessed with gaining Kushida's trust. And given the social pressure, Kushida can't really refuse. With the information at hand, Ainekoji set his goal. He will overcome this exam safely while keeping three key targets alive, Kei, Hirata, and Horikita. But why? Why is he narrowing down those he wants to save? Why not protect his friends? In fact, he goes out of his way to say he's not protecting them. But apparently as a friend, he'll definitely pray for them not to get expelled. I don't know, am I a terrible person? Because even though this is twisted, I could not stop laughing. So yeah, why is he taking the stance? Well, there's two parts. First is the exam itself. Ainekoji already understands what it's about and it boils down to one thing, cooperation. The more connections you have, 
The more information you can access, the more accurate your plans. Ainokoji faced this roadblock before, during the Zodiac exam. No way he can influence every group. Not to mention, compared to Ruin, Nagumo is a different beast. This guy has full control over all the second years. His intel is second to none. And that's not even the worst part. Remember in volume 7.5, when Kei asked Ainokoji if he could take on Nagumo, and Ainokoji answered, as far as physical strength and academic quality is concerned, I'm sure I won't lose to him. However, when it comes to battles where the rules of the school are applied, there are no absolutes. This is one of those battles. That's why he wanted to know if Nagumo devised this exam. He's up against his toughest opponent yet. Dude is broken OP in an exam where expulsion is a very real possibility. That's why Ainokoji is playing it safe. Remember, it's in his nature to minimize risks. And he's doing that by narrowing down his targets. But why are Horikita and Hirata on that list? Well, he gives us surface level reasons. Like Hirata is a great ally. And since Ainokoji is involved with the council, he has to save Horikita. While the reasons are valid, with Ainokoji there is always more. And his reasoning directly follows volume 7.5. And at the root of it all is his desire to keep the deal with Manabu going. To give him a reason to fight Nagumo. To give him a reason to keep working with Kei because of his feelings for her. Firstly, if Horikita is expelled, Manabu might call off the deal. So she needs to survive. Also, to keep Nagumo in check while protecting Kei, Hirata is a vital ally. Remember during winter break when Ainikoji asked Horikita to join the council? She denied the request. Who was his second choice? Hirata. He explicitly states that other than Horikita, he's the only other person that meets the right qualifications. He has enough merit to join the council, wouldn't raise any eyebrows if he joined, and would follow Ainokoji's orders. Both Hirata and Horikita are important for his deal, important to keep his bond with K alive. So it's not a coincidence that they're the only ones who showed up on that list. Listen, there's another motivation to consider. Could be the theme where Ainokoji loves to see growth, like with Ruin. And he thinks Hirata and Horikita have the highest potential for growth. That may be another reason why he wants to save them. Man, multiple motivations for Ainokoji's actions. That's what makes these volumes so exciting. Right now, Ainokoji figured Kei is scared. So he sent her instructions on how to protect herself. Finally, they arrived on the special grounds. It was cold, but everyone completely forgot the weather. Given the spectacle in front of them, a wide open space resembling the school grounds with two massive old fashioned buildings, the scent of timber tickling their noses. The scale is nothing they could have imagined, but no time to admire the view. They were packed into the gym. Time to form their small groups. Ainokuji expected some hesitation, but nah, right away class A formed a massive group. 14 people strong. Their leader was Matoba. Look, this is obviously not Matoba's model, but we don't know what he looks like. So for now, it'll have to do. By the way, Katsuragi was part of that group, but did not say a word. Remember, he gave up power to Arisu. Class A had a deal for everyone. They need one more member. If someone joins their group, they can use the remaining six Class A students however they like. Form any group they want. Hirata wasn't opposed, but Kanzaki is skeptical. And in the face of that skepticism, the Class A students employed another condition. The deal was only good for five minutes. Kanzaki rightfully was like, what BS is this? The Class A students were frank. It's not like they won't negotiate after the five minutes, but if they take up the offer now, they'll get another benefit on top. Whoever joins their group is guaranteed zero risk. As long as the person doesn't deliberately suck, the group will give them a free pass. They won't drag them down and they'll pardon any bad score. They won't even have to be the leader. Katsuragi will take that role. Now this got people thinking, especially those who are nervous. A free pass doesn't sound so bad and it's a majority class A group, they will do well. Still, Kanzaki wasn't sold, pointing out how the five minute timer is stupid. Because after it's up, no one will want to join their group because there's no promise of a free pass. The class A boys did not care, retreating into their own corner. 
If you think about it, this is similar to Class A strategy in Volume 4. A purely defensive play, not meant to win as in maximize points, but meant to not lose. A very Katsuragi strategy. However, Katsuragi is no longer in control, and Arisu is 100% the most aggressive lolly known to man. It's not a strategy she would use. My guess is she wants everyone to still think there is a power struggle. That way they won't pay attention to her other plans. You'll soon understand what I mean. While Kanzaki and Hirata debated, Ainikuchi agreed it's not a bad deal. And a surprising face shared his opinion, Kaneda from Class D. And after some thought, Hirata agreed, and Yamauchi would join the Class A supergroup. Okay, so one down, five more to go. Kanzaki and Kaneda were on the same page, maximize points with a four-way mix. But that's a hard sell. No one wants to work with the enemy. Arguments flying everywhere. Not to mention there's a giant red elephant in the room, Ruin. Supposedly, he stepped down from leadership, but no one really bought it because he's tricked them so many times before. That's why most couldn't trust him and were afraid of him. Shibata confronts Kaneda, asking if he's under Ruin's orders. And real talks right here, Kaneda was an absolute boss. I'm just gonna quote him, it's that good. No, this is my idea. His opinions are irrelevant. And even if it was, it's me you're talking to right now. You got a problem with that? 1 million percent Chad, and rightfully Shibata apologized. The groups took shape, everyone having their own priority. Hirata was focused on saving his classmates. Miyaki wants to win, but ultimately ruin was the issue. No one wants to take him, not even Class D. Hirata tried to take him in, again his desire to save everyone taking hold. But his groupmates fiercely objected. Without knowing where he goes, they were at a standstill. But an unexpected person got things going. Miyaki, he had a proposal. He'll group with Ruin, but in exchange he wants a cut from the winnings, from anyone who takes first. It's his compensation for harboring this massive bomb. After a bit of debate, they all agreed. Groups formed, here's who Ainekoji was with. Class C, Koenji, Yukimura, and himself. Class B, Sumida, Moriyama, and Tokito. Class A, Yahiko, and Hashimoto. Class D, Ishizaki, and Albert. Poor guys, getting absolutely manhandled and then forced into the same group. Unfortunate. Yukimura was nervous, and Ishizaki could barely make eye contact with Ainekoji. But they didn't have time to worry, since the main threat showed up, Nagumo. The seniors were done making groups, and Nagumo being as aggressive as ever, wanted to form large groups right away. Manabu was on board. No one else dared object. Nagumo suggests a draft. The six reps of the first year groups will pick whoever they want from the seniors. Problem is, Ainekoji's group didn't have a rep, so our boy gave Yukimura a slight push, and dude reluctantly agreed. Draft commenced and obviously you want Nagumo or Manabu. And yeah, Manabu was first pick. However, surprisingly enough, it went to third pick, fourth pick, but no one picked Nagumo. Ainekoji wondered why and Miyake explained. Sure, Nagumo's a star player, but his group mates suck. Lots of class C and D students. And when it was Yukimura's pick, his group mates urged him to pick Nagumo. So he did. Ainekoji and Nagumo in the same group. There's no way this can go wrong. Soon we got the large groups, but we were far from done. The real show was about to begin. Nagumo in front of everyone challenged Manabu. The third years were not happy. Apparently he does this a lot, but Manabu always turns him down. Nagumo provoked Manabu. Is it because your friends are afraid you'd lose to me? Ainekoji carefully watched the second years. To them, Nagumo was gone. Nagumo revealed his frustration, and likely the reason he approached Ainekoji in 7.5. During the sports festival, he was supposed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manabu, but unfortunately, someone else took that role. I wonder who? Nagumo made his motivation clear. He wants to see if he surpassed Manabu, surpassed the former student council president. Right now, Nagumo proved Ainekoji's observation. He's the type of man that needs to show off. He could have done this privately, but he intentionally made it public. Realizing Nagumo is not backing down, Manabu asks what he had in mind. Nagumo jokingly suggests a competition to see who can expel the most students. But with Nagumo, it might not be a joke. Obviously, Manabu won't entertain that. So he backtracked. A simple wager. Whoever's large group scores the most. Manabu was okay with that, but he had a condition. This is a fight between them. 
Nagumo can't drag in others. Nagumo accepted. Leaving Manabu's pawns alone, that's not too hard. But Manabu corrected him. He's not allowed to manipulate any other group. He can't hurt innocent bystanders. If he does, the bet is off. Nagumo laughed knowing Manabu saw right through him. That's exactly what he was gonna do. Nagumo accepted. Okay, fair and square. With their prides on the line. However, Ainakoji knew Manabu could care less. Winning or losing meant nothing for his pride. What a gangster. After the show, Nagumo assembled his large group. He called out Ainakoji's group for being without a leader. Nagumo knew since Yukimura hesitated during the draft. This was impressive. The reason Ainakoji pushed Yukimura was so that no one finds out they're leaderless. Ainakoji was getting all the data he needs on Nagumo. One of his apparent strengths are reading others. Nagumo demanded they decide on a leader ASAP. The quicker they decide, the quicker the leader understands the weight of the role. We'll see how this plays out. But yeah, no one wants to be leader. So they decide using rock, paper, scissors? Are they gonna be okay? But forget being leader, Koenji doesn't even want to play rock, paper, scissors. And within the next 5 seconds, he managed to piss off everyone, including the seniors. Here's my favorite interaction. Hey first year, Koenji right? Are you mocking us senior students? And then Koenji replies, mocking you? No, I'm not mocking anything. From the very beginning, I had no interest in you lot. You may relax. As you can imagine, this did not go over well. Ishizaki specifically was molding. Well, the group had an idea. If Koenji doesn't cooperate, they'll just make him leader. Koenji informed them that was not a good idea. If he's the leader, he'll just do nothing. Hell, he might even boycott the exam. Ishizaki stated the obvious. If he does that, he'll be expelled. But Koenji didn't seem worried about expulsion at all. However, Ainakoji knew that was not the case. He wondered if anyone else would catch on. No one did but one person. Nagumo. He made his way over and got ahead to Koenji. He did not fear Nagumo in the least, treating him like everyone else. But Nagumo called Koenji's bluff. In his eyes, sure, Koenji didn't want to put in the effort to reach class A, but he also had no intention of leaving the school. Koenji laughed, asking how is he so sure. To Nagumo, it was written all over his face. Again, another display of how Nagumo can read people. And Koenji commended him, he was right. Koenji lied because he didn't want to be the leader. He doesn't care about class A, but he doesn't want to be expelled either. However, Nagumo called him out again. Koenji does want to reach class A. He just has a guaranteed method of getting there. Koenji demanded he explain, but Nagumo asked if he really wants that. Because if he explains, he'll also make sure that sure method is gone. Koenji didn't care. He just wants to know if Nagumo can really read him. Nagumo obliged. To get to class A, you need 20 million points. But that's hard to save up. So right after enrollment, Koenji made his move. Looking up what happens to points after students graduate. Turns out those points are converted to cash and given to the graduates. Koenji's plan was to buy up those points at a premium. Koenji gets class A, the graduating students get more money. Win, win. The students all around could not believe their ears. Koenji had a satisfying smile saying that's exactly right. For him, none of these exams mattered as long as he could legally get those points. He's guaranteed class A. And as for how Nagumo knew, the second years that Koenji approached told him, even though Koenji demanded they keep their mouths shut. Again, Aina Koji is watching. This proved his other observation. The trust and information Nagumo has is unparalleled. Nagumo declared that's the end of Koenji's plans. He'll consult the school and it'll no longer be legal. Koenji's like, whatever. That was just one of his ways. Meanwhile, Hashimoto was fascinated. Ultimately, Yukimura bit the bullet and became leader. They settled into their room. Ishizaki was still freaked out by Aina Koji. And Aina Koji's like, man, he doesn't need to be that on guard. I'd say his reaction is about normal. And Koenji continued to just piss everyone off. The funniest interaction is when Hashimoto asked if Albert spoke Japanese. Ishizaki tried to confirm, but Albert just stared on right ahead, completely ignoring him. Hashimoto would be bunk buddies with Aina Nikoji. He was an interesting dude, but his intentions were quite apparent. Hashimoto started questioning Ishizaki, asking if Ruen really stepped down. Ishizaki messed up here and there but kept up the act. Remember, Hashimoto was there when Arisu approached Ruen during winter break. 
Soon it was meal time, a rare opportunity to interact with the girls. Ike was likely looking forward to spending time with Shinohara. Apparently their Christmas date went well. Ainekoji on the other hand knew both Horikita and Kei were looking for him. Ah, uh, the curse of being popular. But Ainekoji won't make contact with Kei. Both Arisu and Nagumo could be watching. It's too risky. Off in the distance, he noticed Ichinose being all cute and stuff. So he grabbed a seat nearby to listen in. He already knew Class B had enough points for a lifeline. But he learned they were willing to use it. Ichinose was exhausted. Apparently the boys group formation was solid because the girls did not have it easy. There were way more arguments. Ichinose leaned on the table and noticed our boy. She called out to him. Ichinose was embarrassed for leaning inappropriately, but Ainekoji told her it's all good. However, Honami is anything but defenseless. Even during this conversation, she was trying to gather intel. Both she and Ainekoji knew that was the point of lunch, to collect information using your personal connections. Unfortunately, our boy was on to her. Ainekoji decided to leave, parting with some words of comfort. Here we get a glimpse into Honami's mind. She feels under pressure. Class B's unity is their strength, but it's not available in this exam. She has to ally with her enemies. Ichinose also had doubts about Class C. You only hear of Horikita's accomplishments, but Ainekoji is always perfectly positioned. Just how much influence does he have? And when she was targeted by that letter, Ruin couldn't have known about her points. Did a class B student leak it? Or was it Ainekoji? She's aware he knows about her points. If Ainekoji ends up being a threat, she'll need to ready herself to protect those she cares about. Fast forward to the official first day of camp, and right away Ishizaki is annoyed. Dude is not a morning person. However, Yukimura being as diligent as ever, urging no one to be late. They don't want demerits. However, Koenji was nowhere to be found. But he did turn up later. Man got a whole morning workout in. You know, just Koenji things. Yukimura wasn't happy about Koenji using up all his energy, but Koenji challenged him. Hey, if you don't want me to work out, you need to tell me. He knows Koenji's routine. He's roomed with him before. This little scene turned into a full-blown argument when Ishizaki and Yahiko joined. Ainekoji realized the problem. Yukimura's leadership skills are non-existent. Dude only barks what he wants, not thinking about what others feel. Hashimoto had had enough. He punched the wooden side of the bed, getting everyone's attention. He declared this is neither the time nor place. He backed up Yukimura's sentiment, but put his own twist on it. Stop fighting, get on with your day, Go eat, and if you're still angry, feel free to beat each other silly after. Ainekoji was impressed. Hashimoto's ability to de-escalate is top-notch. Good if not better than Hirata. Truly lives up to the name of Class A. So the day commenced and first up was cleaning, followed by lessons from special instructors, and then Zazen with other groups. Ainekoji was into it, he's never done this before, but all the other students struggled, except for Koenji who was killing it. So far so good. They gathered outside for breakfast, a spacious area with multiple cooking stations. Today, they even got free food, but starting tomorrow, they had to cook. Simple Japanese breakfast. Yukimura was overjoyed. Compared to the island exam, this is heaven. Nagumo decides they would take turns making breakfast. No one dared object, but most of them didn't know how to cook. And if that wasn't bad enough, they had to wake up at 4 a.m. Ainekoji realized he needs to make a move. All throughout the day, he's been taking in information, and he starts analyzing his teammates. He theorized students like Ishizaki, Yukimura, Yahiko, they were not meant to lead. In their group, only Hashimoto was fit for the job. He's sharp and able to make decisions while taking the feelings of others into account. But dude seems uninterested. After breakfast, it was more studying. The classroom resembled a university lecture hall. You can sit wherever you want, but the first years didn't there. They waited for the seniors. Yukimura was specially worried about this, warning everyone. It's exactly as Nagumo said. Yukimura was starting to understand the weight of leadership. Even greeting the seniors was nerve-wracking. He was hyper-conscious of everything, thinking every mistake was his fault. Ainekoji knew it was only a matter of time until he cracks. Next up is PE. The focus is marathon running, clearly a part of the final exam. Again, Yukimura struggled. This dude is not meant for anything physical. Meanwhile, Ishizaki and Albert did well. Ainekoji figured it's time to act. If he does nothing, his group would self-destruct. 
At the very least, he'd like to avoid an expulsion. He debated the outcome he wanted. Does he make sure they don't come in last? Or propel them to the very top? Decisions, decisions. Ainakuji decided to stick to his original goal, overcoming this exam safely. The chance Yukimura drags him down is slim, but it isn't none. So he'd like to avoid making that even a possibility. He slowed down and joined Koenji. Dude didn't even notice he was there. Ainakuji asked Koenji to go easy on everyone. Koenji couldn't even imagine entertaining that. He won't slow down for the masses. Koenji asked Ainakuji what he wants. Simple, avoid expulsion. Koenji countered, then work for it. Ainakoji explained that having this conversation is working for it. But soon Koenji was off in his own world. Ainakoji realized half-baked threats and appeals aren't gonna work on this guy. Well, at least he understood Koenji a little bit better. After training was more classes, followed up by meditation. Yukimura was dying, everyone was. Ainikoji made another move, giving Yukimura advice. You gotta get along with class D. Yukimura wasn't having any of it. To him, they were the enemy. Ainikoji points out how Nagumo united his grade. Yukimura just chalked it up to talent. Nobody in their year can achieve that. Yukimura's only goal was to reach class A. Dude was super frustrated and left. After this, they had dinner, but Ainikoji noticed something go down. So he went to take a look. Seconds earlier, Yamauchi was walking with his crew, being ridiculously loud, and walking opposite to him was Arisu. Yamauchi had zero awareness. Arisu noticed they would crash. She, despite the handicap, could adjust her trajectory, but there were times where her legs hurt, so much so that she couldn't move. Now was one of those times. Knowing this, she called out to Yamauchi, urging him to look out, but his loudness drowned out her voice. Arisu tried everything, so she didn't bother accepting her fate. Yamauchi bodied the poor girl. Arisu did her best, assuming a sitting position as she falls. Yamauchi apologized. Arisu knew who he was, but as far as she's concerned, he's nothing more than a fly. An insignificant existence. Arisu told him not to worry. He offered her a hand, but she didn't accept it, doing her best to get up on her own. It wasn't easy. She had to lean against the wall, struggling. Although it didn't take too long, in a situation like this where everyone's eyes are on you, a few seconds can feel like an eternity. Yamauchi gave her a half-baked apology and walked off. As he left, he joked about how clumsy Arisu was. Ainakoji was amazed. Yamauchi couldn't even fathom that it was his fault. Arisu heard Yamauchi's remarks. He really had the guts to say this while still being close enough for her to hear. Arisu's eyes met with Ainakoji. She regrets showing him something this unsightly. Ainakoji asked if she was okay. Arisu brushed it off, saying she's fine. Ainakoji said he'd give Yamauchi an earful later, but Arisu told him not to bother because in her head, Yamauchi was already done. Hey, it's only fair. He made her fall, so she gained the right to make him fall as well. If an eye for an eye leaves the world blind, then so be it. Sooner or later, she'll deliver her special gift. Before they part ways, Arisu had something to share. She brought up the topic of Honami and how she has everyone's trust. But Arisu posed a question. Is it really okay to trust her that much? A continuation of their chat from winter break. Clues on how she intends to quote unquote play with Ichinose. Ainakoji gave her the most Ainakoji answer ever. This has nothing to do with them. But if you've been following the story with me, you know it has everything to do with him. You'll see why in a second. Arisu did not care for Ainakoji's answer and kept on going, saying she's heard rumors about how Ichinose saved up a lot of points, even though she hasn't earned much during the exams. Enough points to warrant an investigation doesn't make much sense unless she's acting as a vault for class B, storing all their points. Ainakoji acted bored of the stock when he in fact was the one who spread that rumor, sending out the letter to everyone in volume 6, letting them know that Ichinose is hoarding points, which now occupied Arisu's attention, enticing her to act. And this is so good because Ichinose's short story earlier, where she wondered if Ainakoji was involved in that rumor, was not only a hint but also foreshadowing this scene taking place. And Arisu kept on rambling as if under Ainakoji's spell, asking if it's really okay to entrust her with so many points. What if she double crosses class B? What if she uses it for her own gain? 
maybe to protect someone else. And Sai touched on this topic at the beginning. Classes operate differently. Some are individualistic, where it's every man for themselves. Others sacrifice individuality for the collective. Ainokoji kept acting uninterested, even casting doubt on Arisu's ideas. But this is by design because he's analyzed Arisu's personality down to a T, especially during winter break. That whole speech about education never beating talent, you could practically feel the pride she had in her abilities, in her intellect. A certain saying has held true throughout history. People hate being sold to, but they love buying. That's why Ainokoji acted uninterested in Arisu's plan. No way can he let her think for a second that he wants her to do this. As long as Arisu thinks it's her own idea, her pride will act like a compass, driving her towards Honami and away from him. Remember, during the cafeteria scene, Ainekoji mentions two threats, Nagumo and Arisu. He had countermeasures placed even before this exam to get rid of one of those threats. And finally, the seed Ainekoji planted would bloom into Ichinose's downfall when Arisu reveals her plan. Yes, that is true. At the very least, for now, nobody is doubting her. Ainekoji realized what will happen. Arisu will go for Honami's throat, the root of her strength, to sever the trust between her and her class. Arisu rejoiced at how fun school is gonna be when they return, and she walked off without a care in the world, dancing in the palm of Ainekoji's hand. And hey, if you wanna know what happens next, including the beauty that is the T-Rex scene, just click right here.